Discover the secretive world of Russia's private military contractors, PMC, beyond just Wagner in this eye-opening video. Learn about the various private armies operating in Russia, their roles, and their impact on global affairs. From training to missions, get an inside look at these shadowy organizations and their connection to the Russian government. Dive deep into the world of Russian PMCs and uncover the truth behind their operations. Detective Globe Magnifying Glass During the war in Ukraine, the Wagner Group positioned itself as one of the most powerful PMCs, private military contractors, on the planet. They were responsible for significant victories due to their large number of combatants, military and economic resources, and the combat experience of many of their members. However, what few people know is that the Wagner Group is just one of the PMCs serving the Russian Federation. The Kremlin has a network of private troops that operate in the shadows, sometimes in plain sight, maintaining a level of efficiency comparable to regular armies and elite special forces, varying according to the context of the group in question. Main Russian PMCs If you thought the Wagner Group, often compared to Blackwater in the US, was the only one, you are mistaken. Today, I will show you in detail the main private military contractor groups serving Vladimir Putin, in a video full of information rarely mentioned in conventional media. Expansion of Russian PMCs Over the past 15 years, Russia has added dozens of private military contractor groups to its ranks. These groups are present in various countries around the world and carry out tasks that regular soldiers cannot or should not perform. These activities include operations that the Russian army prefers to avoid. PMCs are a trump card for the Kremlin. Difference between mercenaries and PMCs. It's important to clarify that there is a fine but significant difference between mercenaries and private military contractors. I'm not here to tell you what to believe, but for Russia, all these groups you are about to learn about are considered private military contractors. Reasons for using PMCs. Why does a nation like Russia, with hundreds of thousands of troops and resources, need these PMC services? The truth is that all major powers have resorted to such groups, including the United States, China, and France. The Russian case is special, as its foreign policy strikes a fine balance between being a counterweight to the West and avoiding direct conflicts with the United States. Operations and Controversies the Kremlin has built bridges with numerous countries and has operated in the politics of satellite nations, whether training armies, defending leaders, or eliminating opposition. Some of these operations are too controversial even for Moscow, so they resort to third parties to maintain plausible deniability, providing an alibi to avoid accountability under international law. Wagner Group in the Ukraine War Although this video is not exclusively about the Wagner Group, it is important to mention some aspects to stay in sync. Since the Crimea conflict in 2014, this organization has been present in Ukraine with professional elements and Russian prisoners who served from the shadows. They became the spearhead for some of the most important battles, including the campaign in Bakhmut in 2023. The war in Ukraine earned them a new level of international attention and a slow but steady integration into regular forces. The lines separating Wagner troops from the regular army are now very blurred. Amidst all this, a purported coup d'etat was led by Yevgeny Prigozhin, who died in a plane crash in August 2023. The Wagner group has been the model for establishing new groups. Versatile, experienced, and lethal, the dream of a leader like Vladimir Putin. Reddit. In 2008, a group of former members of the Russian Ministry of Defense, Foreign Intelligence Service, and Russian Air Force formed a private organization that has gone by many names, such as anti-terror group Oral Shield, but the most well-known is Reddit, meaning, Redoubt, which refers to their defensive role. It is said that Reddit is linked to the GRU, the Russian Foreign Intelligence Agency. During its early years, Reddit members supplemented the regular Russian army. They carried out convoy protection operations for the Kremlin abroad, conducted transport tasks in dangerous areas, and performed patrols before regular troop deployments, similar to what Blackwater did in its heyday in Afghanistan and Iraq. One of Redut's most notable clients was Gennady Timchenko, a businessman and former KGB officer who needed to protect his oil businesses in Syria during the civil war. Reddit has always been relatively small, with just enough operators to carry out its missions. It is estimated that they never employed more than 55 or 65 contractors simultaneously, with armament and transport provided by the Russian Federation's Ministry of Defense. 
The relationship between Russian oligarchs and Vladimir Putin is very close and mutually beneficial. According to journalistic and intelligence sources like Bellingcat and Insider, Reddit was the group chosen by GRU Deputy Chief Vladimir Alexeyev to carry out a masterstroke during the invasion of Ukraine. The assassination of Volodymyr Zelensky. Some media cite that Reddit lost 80% to 90% of its operators at the start of the war. But both the assassination of Zelensky and the loss of their men are not 100% confirmed. After the Wagner Group's mutiny, Reddit returned to action, recruiting new members. Today, it is estimated that they have about 6,500 to 7,000 operators and intend to take Wagner's place in Syria, a lucrative contract for any PMC. An interesting fact is that Reddit accepts women into the Boers Battalion, primarily as snipers and FPV drone operators. Patriot. Another of the most important private military groups in the Russian Federation is Patriot, which is under the influence of the intelligence services and, more importantly, the Minister of Defense Sergei Shigu. Some sources even cite him as its owner, a sort of personal army. Unlike Reddit and Wagner, Patriot is composed of several smaller organizations operating under that name to facilitate missions. They focused on recruiting the most prepared and skilled veterans in the country, including intelligence analysts and spetsnaz, prioritizing quality over quantity. Their goal is to have troops capable of conducting asymmetric warfare activities, as well as high-complexity intelligence and infiltration missions behind enemy lines. Patriot is a more sophisticated option for problems requiring elite personnel, who are sometimes paid three or four times more than a Wagner Group operator. It is known that Patriot operated in Syria, protecting the businesses of Gennady Timchenko alongside the Wagner Group and Reddit. They were also sent to African nations such as Sudan, Gabon, and other strategic regions to support Kremlin interests. In the Central African Republic, Patriot operators were accused of murdering three journalists who were tracking the shipment of Russian weapons. In the war in Ukraine, it is known that Patriot was present at the Battle of Bakhmut in Donetsk, although it is not 100% clear what their role was, likely destroying significant Ukrainian army assets. Rusich. One of the most prominent groups is Rusic. Unlike the rest of the organizations presented today, this group is not mobilized solely for money but also for ideology, as they have strong ties to the Russian far right. This is very controversial, and there are many versions of the history and symbolism. The group was founded in 2009 by Alexei Milchikov. Rusic has been operational since 2009, providing support and logistics in various regions of the world, but it was in 2014 that it gained more prominence due to its role in the conflict with Ukraine. They carried out sabotage and attack missions behind enemy lines, undermining the capabilities of the Ukrainian resistance. Their major claim to fame came in September 2014 when they destroyed a Ukrainian military convoy and took photos with the remains of the victims, contributing to their infamous and controversial reputation. It is said that in 2022 they were responsible for the massacre in Izium, a Ukrainian town where mass graves with over 440 soldiers and civilians were found. Currently, the group is believed to be smaller but continues to carry out sabotage and reconnaissance missions in the war in Ukraine. Russian Imperial Movement The Russian Imperial Movement is a nationalist organization that can be traced back to 2002 in the city of St. Petersburg, where it functioned as a political front advocating ethno-nationalism. Over time, an armed wing emerged that became the most important part of the movement. It is known that by 2010, the group had established training centers for recruits who shared their ideological vision. In these spaces, volunteers received training in weapons handling and military activities with the aim of forming a powerful militia. By 2014, the Russian Imperial Movement had its own legion, a militarized wing of unregulated soldiers. Due to their proven capability, they were sent to the Donbass region to support the pro-Russian separatists and eliminate key figures of Ukrainian nationalism. They were heavily involved until 2016. Unlike the other contractor groups mentioned, the Russian Imperial Movement is an entry point for civilians mobilized by their fervent nationalism. After two years of constant operations in Ukraine, in 2017, the movement focused on improving its military academy, also known as Partisan, where hundreds of recruits received training in political classes. The influence of this group grew beyond Russia's borders, establishing a presence in former Soviet Union countries and Western European nations. 
The Russian imperial movement's networks even reached the United States, where they held conferences. For years, this movement has been designated as a terrorist group by the United States since 2020. In 2019, they deployed operators in Syria and then in Libya to support the efforts of warlord Khalifa Haftar in his civil war. Today, the group's greatest contribution to the Russian Federation is the partisan training center. Gazprom. Fakel and Potek. The last case to analyze is very interesting. It involves the most recent paramilitary militias, which were not created by politicians or military personnel but by Gazprom, the state gas company. Currently, the company has two armed branches, the Fakel Battalions, which means, Torch, and the Potok Battalions, which means, Stream. Some reports suggest a third group called Pamaya, or, Flame, but this information has not been fully confirmed. What is known is that Fakel and Potok have strong ties with another highly experienced PMC. According to military analysts, Gazprom's battalions were formed with the help of Reddit, a group that conducted the recruitment and training of troops but does not have authority over their activities. Gazprom, being one of the most powerful companies on the planet with annual profits of nearly $140 billion and 450,000 employees, can afford to pay very high salaries and provide top-level weaponry to its operators. You might wonder why a state-owned gas company needs its own private army. The answer is quite simple, protection of high-value targets. Fakel and Potok have conducted defensive operations in oil facilities and pipelines in the territory acquired during this war in Ukraine. Their mission is to preserve Gazprom's vast network. The defense of the company's interests is a matter of state because the generated profits and their regional importance are a pillar of the Russian Federation. Don't get me wrong, this is not unusual. Other oil companies like Exxon or BP have very similar security in their oil fields around the world. If you want to support the channel, consider getting a membership. You can see the available options by clicking on the button that says, join, just below this video. Your support is completely optional, but I greatly appreciate it as it helps us bring you more content.